OK, so um, welcome to week four already. I can't believe we're here. I don't have anybody on the call today. I hope that you guys saw that I'm I was having the call today. But. I'm going to share my screen for a minute. Of course, if you have any questions, just message it to me. That's all you have to do. Uh, but so far, you guys seem to be doing real well with this. So that's good stuff. All right. So um, again, I don't see any messages. I'm assuming everybody knew, uh, you know, knows what we need to do. So and knew that there was a class today. So hopefully it's not an issue. But let's talk about internal control. We don't have any big assignments, so I didn't give you any new help on this. But you do have a quiz, and you know if you're reading and uh, doing the work on the quiz, it shouldn't be too difficult. I know some of you already started it. Uh, you know, you're allowed one attempt. OK. Let's take a look at some of the questions so you can get a better idea. So Baines Oxley, what does it apply to? Not for profits, publicly held. I mean, you know, you should know more about Sarbanes Oxley, right? Very important um, piece of legislation. So, you know, make sure you understand that, right? It's about helping publicly traded companies. So stay on top of that, you know, and, and really understand Sarbanes Oxley because it really is a seminal piece of work. It, you know, after we had all of the problems, these, the legal problems and the fraud problems that existed with Enron and WorldCom and all the stuff that happened in the 2000s, this was a way for us to, um, you know, control. And the way they control it, it was basically a way for them to say, listen, if you're a CAE, if you're a CEO or CFO and you signed off on bad numbers, you're responsible too. And so you couldn't just blame it to the next, you know, you couldn't just have plausible deniability. Which of the following is not an element of internal control? Okay, you have to have information and communication, you have to have risk assessment, you have to have monitoring. Cost benefit considerations could be an issue. Right? Uh, you know, that that's not internal controls. That's more about making firm profitable. And that was pretty, I thought that was pretty straightforward. Which one of the following is not a fact that it influences a business's control environment? Well, uh, management's philosophy, personal policies, those things are. I mean, those things aren't. I mean, sorry, those things are. But profits and security measures, once again, is about taking money. It's not about control. Excuse me one minute, I just want to open a window. My wife shut the air conditioning down and she doesn't open one. She didn't, she didn't let us know. Open the window. God love her. Okay. Um, when, when a firm uses internal auditors, it is adhering to which of the internal control elements? Monitoring. Proofs and security measures. This one's a little confusing because you can think of proof, proofs and security measures and risk assessment as um, something that may be in order to get some involved in, but they don't. They're really just making sure they're monitoring your firm and that you're doing everything correctly according to GAAP, GAAP. So that's the answer. Here, you know, Try to understand what an, what an internal auditor does. Internal auditor works within your firm to make sure you're following all the, pres the prescribed uh, um, methodologies that you're supposed to use when um, applying accounting principles. Which one of the following reflects a weak internal control system? A single employee responsible for receiving a report? That's not a big deal. All employees, although you do have to keep an eye on that comparing and receiving a report. You do have to keep an eye on that. I, I don't know if I totally agree with that. I've seen cases where, you know, an employee can, that's that's in charge of invoices can, you know, if, if things happen. And sometimes not even because the person's like an arch criminal. They just come into it. You know, you just don't know why people do what they do. Sometimes maybe they just get into I'm not making excuses. I'm just saying people don't always do bad things and fraudulent things because they're bad people. Sometimes they get a bad spot and they do something they really shouldn't do. You know? But let's leave that aside for a minute. 
but I don't know that you want one employee doing anything that has anything to do with money has to be paid. So I'm going to kind of qualify that. All employees must take their vacations. That's not a problem. Well, but again, uh, it's not weak. It's a good idea. Okay, which one of it's it, 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 it it's not weak. You know, it's good to have your employees take vacations. One of the things we've found over the years is that when somebody never goes leaves the office, you know, maybe they're just hard workers, but you have to keep an eye that they're not doing something wrong. And they don't want to get away where someone could catch them. All employees are well supervised. It's not obviously not weak. A single employee responsible for collecting recording cash, there's a problem. So the first two I think are problems, but B is obviously the answer. Internal control does not consist of policies and procedures that guarantee the company will earn a profit. Again, anytime you see something where we're worrying about a profit, it's not so much about internal controls. It's only when you got things like you're protecting your assets, ensuring your employees and managers comply with laws, ensuring that business information is accurate. That's where you're going to be dealing with those issues. A firm's internal control environment is not influenced by monitoring policies. So it's again, the same question. We're just flipping it out again. Uh, an element of internal control is risk assessment. Journals is really just part of the accounting process. Controlling accounts, I guess you, you can confuse that, but don't. It's really risk assessment. And subsidiary ledgers, those are all really... Uh, they, they, it looks like that could be confusing, but those are all accounting. That's just doing your accounting. This is where we're looking at if we have a problem somewhere. A necessary element of internal control is information and communication. The other stuff are part of your operations. And procedures designed to protect cash from theft and misuse the time it is received and can be deposited into bank or called cash control. So. You know, you want to keep an eye on cash when it comes in a firm that nobody can grab it or do something that's supposed to be doing with it. All right. So those are the questions I gave you a little. Keyword is internal control. Well, the keywords internal control. So on the discussion, we have a discussion that says. Share an experience, and a lot of you did share experiences and good ones, you know. And I appreciated that. I've replied to a lot of them. You know, we've all had those situations where we're made to feel uncomfortable. We see things going on we're not in love with, you know. When maybe they don't rise to the level of a whistleblower. Maybe it's not the end of the world. I know, like I had Lestanda, uh, who usually joins me. I kind of miss her today. She said, um, you know, she had a, 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 a supervisor who was standing over her back. Uh, and she dealt with it, right? She dealt with it, and uh, and that's good. She did a smart thing. So I kind of pointed that one out. She, you know, that's not like that doesn't rise to the level of fraud or anything like that. But it's it, but it makes for a tough work environment. You know, you're doing your job. Why are you watching me so much? I get it. I get it all day long. Uh, I, as a as a manager, as a boss, over my life, I'm a delegator, so I don't do that stuff. You know, I I, I let I, I my view, and I and this is just my two cents. My view is you hire good people, you teach them, and as long as it's not a life and death situation or something that could put you out of business, like on Wall Street, we had just daily trading, and that you had to reconcile. Right now, if something was wrong or trade didn't get reconciled correctly. Or trade was missed, but the trade was made, you could fix that later. So I delegated that stuff, you know. And if then if we saw we were still out on a trade for a while, then I'd be asking questions, obviously. Even research reports. I still had we still had to make the decision. So you give the employee or the analyst enough latitude where they start learning on their own and they're allowed to make some mistakes. And as a supervisor or as a manager or as an owner, you want to catch that stuff. But you gotta let people develop, right? But on the other hand, um, you know, if it's something like, you know, well, we had situations where if you didn't convert a bond, because we did convertible bonds, if you didn't convert the bond, you could lose significant amounts of money. Well, that's something where you have to strip procedures and get on top of it and make sure it gets done. But um, I subscribe to the fact that you want to be a delegator, you know, and and let people learn. I mean, I remember like when I was a kid, we had a country place up in Long Island and there was a farm next to him. My dad had a construction firm, so I did some work for him, too. But 
I would sometimes jump over the fence and help out. And I remember farmers back then, the guy that there was an older couple, they were just nice people. After a while, they got to know you. They knew you wanted to do stuff. It was boring out there sometimes in the summer. You know, jump on a tractor. You know, as long as it was safe and they kept an eye on you, they let you learn. That's how you're going to learn. So I think you got to let um, people learn. But then when you see situations where there is a problem, like one other student mentioned, they were in a situation, they saw a person who was a colleague who they were friendly with doing stuff that maybe they shouldn't do, that can get a little sticky. And, you know, you hate to turn in a friend and it becomes very difficult. So it, those are obviously, um, hold on one second, those are obviously issues that you want to keep an eye on. You just definitely want to keep an eye on Hold on a minute. I just got a crazy call here. So that's stuff you definitely want to keep an eye on. And I'm going to put you on pause just for a minute. Sorry, I'm back. So, yeah, those are things you want to be keeping an eye on when you're dealing with internal controls. So this is not the hardest um, unit because it really doesn't have any heavy math in it, but it really does talk about um, how to control the issues at your firm, right? So you want to have policies, you want to have procedures, and you have to safeguard your assets. So employee theft occurs when an employee takes, takes or uses the company's assets for personal reasons. When an employee takes a pad, pen, you know, anything like that. You know, there was something in New York years ago where they called it a broken windows policy. And part of it might have been a little too tough. But what it meant was they asked the police to go out and just stop minor nuisances. And in, in, in that's a big city. I mean, it's a huge city. And so things like, you know, sometimes you'd come out of a tunnel or you come off a bridge and you stopped or you stop at a, at a, at a light. And you know, if any of you have been to New York, very crowded place. And while you're waiting, some people and the guy and the poor folks, you know, you gotta look at it two ways. Like, you know, as a Christian, I would say, you know, they needed the money. And they're not bad people. Maybe they need maybe they have a problem. Maybe they have a drug problem. Maybe they have a drink problem. But people get those things. It doesn't make them evil. It just makes them people who ran into tough times. Some of them are veterans. I mean, I'm not saying veterans get into that situation. I'm just saying some of them, you don't know how they got there. And you have to have a heart for homeless people and stuff like that. So let me say that at the outset. But you would see that they would come with these dirty squeegees and clean your window and ask for a donation. Sometimes you just give them the donation, please leave my windows alone. Now, the, the, the some people didn't like it. All right, listen, it's 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 America. You're allowed to you know you're allowed to um, disagree, and they'd have the police get involved. You know, uh, so they didn't really call for the police like it was a crime, but the police started like cracking down on those type of nuisances. You know, things like that. Somebody sleeping in a subway where they have homeless shelters. Uh, this is just not good stuff for anybody. But the idea was by well, stopping that stuff or drinking out in public. Now, that's. On my block today or I'm in my house, I don't want to see somebody drinking outside my house. And they felt that that would stop higher crimes did it i'm not a criminal justice major so i don't even know i mean does it i think to some extent maybe it controls like a small area i wonder sometimes you know that people who are vulnerable get caught up in that so that's not here or there the reason why i bring it up is that uh, that logic can apply to big firm in terms of control so if you crack down on small things like you know obviously we all we all could be vulnerable to take us a, a, a box of staples or some stupid like that a pen a pencil i mean nobody's gonna you know come after you for doing that but you remember dennis kazowski uh he was the the chairman of a i'm trying to get a company he it was a big company and he got convicted because he was just stealing stealing i mean just, the expenses he was running up were ridiculous. I think he had like a, a $7,000 umbrella stand. I mean, crazy stuff. 
So, like I heard a lawyer once say, you know, when you're taking pencils and paper, nobody cares. But when you're stealing the whole building, they're going to come down on you. He was a former prosecutor. This guy. Point is, you got to keep an eye on things. Does it mean you got to crack down if somebody takes like a, you know, a, a coffee pod or, a, you know, those little coffee pods or something like that? Come on. I mean, you know, you don't want to be draconian. I think also uh, having an open policy of where you're talking to your employees is important. You know, letting them know, listen, I understand you may need an extra pad at home. Not that you're encouraging them to take money, but maybe you're doing some work at home that you understand that people are human beings. And then there's a flip side to that to make sure that you're not so draconian. Maybe you allow them to have uh, like, you know, you, you buy them lunch every once in a while. Or you you know you say that there's certain things I'm not going to be annoyed about. I mean, if you take a pen or a pencil because you need to do some work at home, you know, blank, 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 blank but don't take the bigger stuff. Uh, you know, th there are stuff that you know, in cartridges and stuff. There's no reason for that. And you know, sometimes just by communicating is your best bet instead of just catching people. As a professor, remember, I was a businessman for many years. As a professor, one of the issues I deal with all the time. And this could be like it seemed like like a internal control problem is plagiarism. And now that you got AI, it's even worse because AI is not necessarily the worst thing. It, it allows students to clean up their work. It allows students to get new ideas and then build on it. You don't want to be using the AI as your own stuff, but you, you want to definitely um, uh, use it as a way to make your work better. Just checking my uh, internet. Um, seems like I'm, things are not working. Okay, good. All right, good. We're back. We're back up. So I hope you didn't miss anything. But we just, I'm really, really, really what I'm doing about this is a pretty simple week. I'm just dealing with um, issues that come up in terms of dealing with internal controls and how you can deal with them. I just, for some reason, my computer slowed down for me. So, um, you know, internal control would be the, the the term I would use here, right? Uh, internal control would be the term I would use here. And uh, if you for your code word, there's really this is not a terribly difficult week. Uh, you just really have to understand about internal controls is uh, from the accounting perspective. Um, I went over the quiz with you guys, so that should help. Maybe you want to go over this case study where we talk about. Um, okay, a parent watching a, parent, uh, 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 a daughter practice, but she also sits there and sees the nightly cash deposits with no balancing of other areas. Specific employee listens to the words, no control, no balancing, and makes a duplicate key to the school. She would enter school at 2 a.m. in the morning and credit a debit card to the dollars. She would do this once or twice a week since the credit card machine was never balanced. OK, so the nightly deposits on the bank and the school was running between three and four, ten thousand dollars a week. Right. So the credit cards machine, the school never noticed the two and three hundred dollars being taken. The employee ultimately left the employer, continued to take this money for months. But she was getting away with taking the money. She figured she could take more. It was not until she started taking two to four thousand dollars a week that the school started to notice. When this former employee was arrested, the credit school owner called of the parent for meeting the owner shared with the employee what well, the owner shared with the employee with this employee the owner shared with this employee had done what this employee had done he could not understand why the parent laughed at him 
Why did the parent laugh at him? The parent told him years before that he had an issue with internal controls. So, you know, this is the case study. <laughs> there you go. So that's a good case study. It shows you got to listen. You got to listen. You got to pay attention. You know, you never know what's going on out there. And uh, I'm not going to keep you too long this morning because that's basically it. Um, if you have any questions, just do the quiz. Um, read the case study. Uh, I think that's about it for this week. I don't think you have much more. If you have older work, just make sure it gets done. I will accept it and, um, you know, enjoy the good weather. You know, enjoy the good weather and contact me if you need anything.